Hello again, Scooper Troopers. Hello. Welcome to the Dipshit Files number 18. 18. I'm the Script Keeper, Mr. Script Keeper. <laughs> and and with me is... And I'm Mrs. Script Keeper. Uh, yes. And we're doing Disclosure. This is the second half of our UFO thing that we did. Mm -hmm. And really the Dipshits this time is the U.S. government? I would have to say yes. And maybe just governments everywhere. <laughs> but if you listen to me at all, you know that I think that just naturally. It's just the way I go. I think the Dipshits this time are our, the U.S. government because uh, as you're going to see through this episode um they were making fun of people and they knew they knew the dicks yeah but people do take great leaps well of course so that's of course there are a lot of dipshits but they could in there they could have helped a little bit they could have said yeah we know but they didn't. no they didn't no. they said no dude's crazy and they destroyed people's lives they did but it's for national security <laughs> it's for the greater good and that's how governments work Ugh. all right let's open up another dipshit file <laughs> Yay, I love UFOs. I don't know. <laughs> All this shit is always very interesting to me, so I'm excited for mm -hmm. this one. And I know nothing about... I, I, I put some things out for Time Suck mm -hmm. and The Secret Suck, mm -hmm. which I shouldn't have said that, but I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really don't remember a lot of it. I remember there's just lots of speculation, mm. you know, and I'm pulling it from the most credible sources possible. Right. Uh, so they usually downplay UFO stuff uh, and, and alien connections and whatnot, but... When did you do still that? Still excited. Was uh, that 2020. 2019, 2020? 2020, yeah. Okay, did you pull some of the very current stuff that was going on? I looked at some of the video, yeah. Nice. Like some of the, they call, they have different names mm -hmm. for them, as we'll learn in this show. Right. But yeah, I watched a couple of them, and it's like, oh, fuck. Nice. It's Yeah. All right, yeah. let's just get into it. There's oh. no, no fluff in this episode. Let's oh. go right straight for the guts. Awesome. This is Disclosure. Should we trust the government about UFOs? So UFOs were once a taboo topic for the U.S. government, but... Honestly, not anymore. Public fascination with flying saucers, glowing lights, and, and UFOs has been going on for generations. I've pretty much been obsessed with alien life since I was a kid. Well, you so. know, they've, they've, there's movies about it. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of It's shit. all sexy. Yeah. Too. Everything's <laughs> sexy about it. How is E.T. sexy? Shut the fuck up, Steve. Just saying. So when creepy things appear in the sky, witnesses have often been reluctant to report them because they fear being made fun of, especially in the halls of our very government. And like you guys have room to talk, you spend $200 on a hammer. But these days, fewer people... People are laughing in light of recent disclosures from the U.S. government. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Very excited about that. So for decades, the UFO conversation has been relegated to the crazy guy sitting at the end of the bar that everyone wants to avoid. Oh, is that guy? Yeah, so I'm going to get out of here. Are you sure you don't want to talk about aliens for another like four or five hours? Yeah. You want to hang out tomorrow and talk about aliens? No. Nope. You want to go back to your house so I can talk to you about aliens? Hard pass. Leading individuals who have had possibly legitimate experiences that leading them to shy away from sharing due to public ridicule. Which is super sad. I don't find it sad at all. But now comes NASA. So NASA isn't saying aliens exist, but... They are saying that goblins and fairies exist. Is saying for the first time in almost half a century that UFOs are worth paying attention to. Meh. The space agency announced last month that a team led by a respected astrophysicist will examine what the government now refers to or they prefer to call UAPs or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Oh. instead of UFOs. And along the way, what was once dismissed as far-fetched conspiracies and delusion has earned the more impressive description of dumbfuck quackadoodlery. Quote, high risk, high impact, end quote, research. Hmm. So that's the new thing. So this, this could be technology of just somebody right. fucking around. Well, that's, that's what they're looking mm -hmm. into. So yeah. this move will not come as a surprise to those who followed the Defense Department's own evaluation of the subject just this last year. The Director of National Intelligence issued a report last year documenting more than 140 perplexing events. I love it. So we're going to touch on these documents that cover intriguing topics such as new categorization for the UAPs, including encounters with, get this, mm -hmm. ghosts, yetis, 
spirits, Fuck. elves, and other mythical legendary entities. So the government is trolling S- us, is what they're doing. It feels like yeah, it. Yeah, they are. Straight. They're like, all right, we know what you guys watch on TV here. Well, sir, the people seem to be pretty interested in UFOs. I see. Wait till they hear about the leprechauns and elves and shit, sir. Yeah, when people find out the tooth fairy's real, fuck. Wait, the tooth fairy's real? No, shit, that's classified. This is straight from the Defense Department's. Dude, that's documentation and i have these saved to my computer i so if you saw a leprechaun recently (laughs) you call the fucking government and you let them know yeah hello government yeah i've got a leprechaun here what do you mean has it bit me no what Ah, come on now there's there's reasons behind this and we're going to go through it and it has to do with the physical effects of having these experiences that are kind of standard across the board so if you see an elf and you have these physical anomalies happen to you they're marking it on a list because if you see an elf or you see a yeti or you see a ufo (laughs) the physical the physical reactions are pretty much same across the board so we'll get into that we're going to get into that fun the government has started its wackadoodle database moving on unidentified flying objects or UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, have been taking, taken more seriously by U.S. officials in recent years. So before we begin, I'm just going to bring everyone up to speed on what's been happening in the last in the news for the last few years. So, so what's the government actually saying? In 2020, the Pentagon made an extraordinary statement. That the Earth is more of a round shape. It's basically roundish. They said that UFOs are real okay. and it has videos to prove it. Well, golly. They released three Three pieces of footage, which are probably the ones that you were talking about, shot from the targeting cameras of U.S. Navy fighter jets, which shows close encounters with fast moving, strange looking craft that the Navy pilots later said defied the known laws of physics. Now, Mm. I've seen these videos, too. I have to agree. Yeah. Uh, fucking phenomenal. Uh, yeah, we got some weird ass shit up here. What the fuck is that? Uh, I'm pretty sure an alien in a flying saucer just flipped me off. Are they having sex? Affirmative, the life forms are having sex in the UFO. I think they want us to come have sex with them in the UFO. I'm really not sure how to file this report. Very interesting. Yes. So the Pentagon statement was just one in a run of extraordinary recent developments that have turned UFOs from a punchline into a serious talking point. Yeah, most, <laughs> most people are still like, yeah, whatever. So, a little gray alien freak. So in May of 2021, former President Barack Obama said there is footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are hmm. in a public statement. Uh, in June of 2021, the U.S. Intelligence Services released a report to Congress about the government's work on the UFO issue. So clearly, the conversation has changed Radically, Mm -hmm. The U.S. government's policy used to be to deny, deny, deny Mm -hmm. and discredit when it came to UFOs. So how did we get to this point where we are today? I think the U.S. government and like the Illuminati are going to fake an alien invasion. So eventually we all have to eat bugs. I mean, that's the most likely scenario, obviously. The last public hearings into the issue began in 1966 when Republic congressman and future president Gerald Ford convened a pair of hearings to discuss UFO sightings following one in Michigan that was observed by over 40 people, Mm. including a dozen policemen. And I think we covered that in uh, a previous episode of the Dipshit Files. It was fascinating. So the the Air Force officials attributed the incident to swamp gas, Classic. leading Ford to deride their description as flippant. Mm-hmm. Pretty much pissed mm-hmm. Ford off. He's I like, bet. that is dumb. dumb. Uh, in 1969, an Air Force investigation into UFOs called Project Blue Book closed after determining that no flying object had ever been confirmed or deemed a threat to the U.S. national security. That's the key point. Yeah. Key point here, national security threat. Fast forward to 2017, when U.S. media reported on the Pentagon's secretive efforts to gather testimony from pilots and other U.S. military members who had reported seeing strange objects in the sky. The report included footage from the UFOs and descriptions of how they seemed to fly in unexpected ways, including hovering in place during high winds and changing elevation rapidly. Pilots describe seeing them on an almost daily basis outside military bases, and one described how UAPs had interfered with U.S. nuclear weapons facilities, even forcing some 
to go offline. In Montana, I think, mm-hmm. I remember that happened. So in 2020, the COVID relief bill signed by former President Donald Trump included a provision requiring U.S. intelligence agencies to deliver an unclassified report on UAPs within 180 days. He gave him six months. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Look at me. Who are you? I'm the Secretary of Defense, sir. Don't want to hear about aliens. I just can't tell you that shit, Mr. President. Wrong. I mean, if you give me some time. You have six months or you're fired. In June of 2021, the U.S. Director of National Intelligence released a report saying it had no explanation for dozens of unidentified flying objects Interesting. related to the 144 incidents dating back to 2004. Only one could be easily explained as a deflating balloon, hmm. while the others were labeled largely inconclusive. So one in 144. Hmm. Very interesting. Most of the UAP... Could have been an alien balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Foolish Earth humans still unable to harness the power of the balloon. Back, 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 back. Okay, Bordax, let's go find another human to shove things in its buttocks. Quote, most of the UAP reported probably do represent physical objects, end quote. The report said, adding that 80 of them were detected on multiple advanced military sensors and radar systems. Now, this was in 2021. This June 2021 report failed to reach any conclusive answers in regards to what the objects are or how they function. It called for expanded investigation and better data collection, given the stigma government workers may have against their describing unexplained encounters. Now, this is stigma that the government has put on them. That's why they're the dipshits. Yeah, Yeah, so... They, they're asking for this stuff from their people now, and the people are like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> they make fun of me. I don't, don't make, you're going you're gonna <laughs> to shove, put you're going to shove Alaska. me in my locker. And, you <laughs> you're know. send me to fucking Fairbanks, yeah, And Alaska. now they're like, no, 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 we're really, we're sorry about those previous swirlies. We're not going to do that to you. Right. Really, we're not. Uh, we no offense, hear. Fairbanks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways, last December, Democrats included a stronger disclosure requirement in the na- annual National Defense Office. Authorization Act signed by Joe Biden. Come on, man. Here's the deal. Aliens. Uh, Mr. President, you're talking to a potted plant. Come on, man. The law requires the military to establish a permanent office on UAP research. Now called Government Alphabet Soup Engage. The Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. Get the fuck out of here. I am not kidding you. Why would they do it like that? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, what, so. What is it? What's the acronym? Is it some word? A, it's A O I. Nope. M S G. Hmm. Oh, uh, A-O-S, Miske. <laughs> it's A-O-S. Crocky fucking A-O-S, Miske. A-O-S. I do A-O-S. Okay, Fine. so an excerpt taken from the United States Department of Defense website, defense.gov, on November 21st, 2021, Deputy Security of Defense Kathleen Hicks, in close collaboration with the Director of National Intelligence, Vice Admiral Frank Whitworth, he was sworn in June 3rd of 2022, okay. directed the Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security to establish within the, within the office of the USD INS the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. <laughs> it's been fun hanging out with you, Todd. Now, you too, Bob. You know, you never told me what you do for a living. That's probably because I'm an agent of the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. Okay, well, what do you do? I lie about shit for the government. Oh. As the successor to the U.S. Navy's Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. Those were simpler times. The Honorable Ronald S. Moultrie was sworn in as Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, USDINS, on June 1st, 2021. The AOMSG will hmm. synchronize efforts across the department and the broader U.S. government to detect, identify, and attribute objects of interest in special use airspace and to assess and mitigate any associated threats to safety of flight and national security, to also provide oversight of the 
Aomska. The mm-hmm. de- deputy secretary also directed the USDINS to lead an Airborne Object Identification and Management Executive Council. What the fuck kind of word salad is that? Captain Cooper, come here. Yes, sir. I need you to head up an Airborne Object Identification and Management Executive Council. Okay, what's that? What do you mean, what's that? You're part of the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, right? I am head of the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. Well, as head of the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, you should certainly know what an airborne object identification and management executive council is. Government is stupid, isn't it? Yeah. To be comprised of the Department of Defense and Intelligent Community Membership and to offer a venue for U.S. government intra-agency representation. They're totally fucking trolling us. Okay, so... We just need to throw Bigfoot in that sentence. And right. It's like, fuck you, we knew it. It's in there. Well, it's not in that sentence, but it's in here. Yetis. Taxpayer-funded trolls. Okay, so there is... This is a direct quote, which is why I'm having a hard time spitting it all out. Bear with me. I'm almost done. I do want to finish this quote that is a direct release from our Department of Defense. Yeah, please. Okay. Incursions by any airborne object into our... SUA pose safety of flight and operation security concerns and may pose national security challenges. The Department of Defense takes reports of incursions by any airborne object, identified or unidentified, very seriously and investigates each one. This decision is the result of planning efforts and collaboration conducted by OUSD I and S. Hey, Private, come here. I need you to take this IOU over to the RSO at the AOI MSG. Okay. It- it's the division of the AATIP of ASRO. Yes, sir. A- ASAP. Okay. And other Department of Defense elements at the direction of Deputy Secretary Hicks to address the challenges associated with assessing UAP occurring on or near Department of Defense training ranges and installations highlighted in the DNI preliminary assessment report submitted to Congress in June of 2021. The report also identified the need to make improvements in processes, policies, technologies, and training to improve our ability to understand UAPs. In the coming weeks, the department will issue implementing guidance, which will contain further details on the AOMSG director, (laughs) organizational structure, authorities, and resourcing. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) Government alphabet soup All word salad. All of that, what I got from that, now there is a lot in there, but what I got from that was... Illuminati confirmed. The government is now, the Department of Defense, along with, in collaboration with other departments, is now taking unidentified aerial phenomena seriously. While trolling us about leprechauns. They're going to look into it in conjunction with other departments. They're going to be working as a team, and they've created a new platform to do that research because governments are the best at that kind of thing i wonder what they really that's think all. is going on i think that's they really all. think it's just some people with it's just not governments with drones or it might be you know rogue governments yeah you know it's like well what's north korea doing you right know? It's, right that, that's what it feels like and they're like hey keep an eye on the sky uh, it's probably aliens or some shit and it's really like a, a you know right nationwide well, they bring intelligence this gathering program. they have brought this stuff up in these documents um and we'll cover that but really where they're at right now is they there's no evidence to show that it is from there's it goes against the law of physics as we know it right and that's the challenge that they're being faced with is the reason why the government is getting involved and outwardly uh, disclosing this information as you will see throughout this episode is because it's increasing there are cell phones out there now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's everything is and everyone is on camera 24 mm-hmm. seven. There are a lot of appearances. Plus, they're increasing as far as um, people seeing them with their naked eye. Now, is it because they're actually paying closer attention? Maybe. Maybe. Seems to me they wouldn't be because we have a. Uh, a, a, an epidemic of individuals that are looking down all the time because right. they're always looking at their cell phones. At their phones. phone, yeah. Right. For sure. But, you know, but we'll But the thing we'll about see. the sky is that so few of us are capable to really give a good estimate of what's going on in the sky. Oh, yeah. And so that's the problem. It's like there are, mm-hmm. there are scientists that are literally trained to look at the sky right. and identify those things. And they're the ones, that when they're saying... 
there's 140 plus of these that mm-hmm. I got nothing. Right. We've we've ex- every single thing besides you know sky dragons mm-hmm. we have exhausted and mm-hmm. we don't. So we don't well, know. you know, and I think there, in all honesty, I think there's probably a fuck ton more of these things going on that and have been for decades but people were too embarrassed to say anything because they were shamed into silence right um publicly and uh, politically i mean as far as the government goes so nobody took them seriously and they were treated like pariah Mm -hmm. so well here, here we are well fuck well, Senator Doofus, you did tell us for years that there were UFOs visiting you. I, I told you, and they went up my butt. Right, and they probed your butt. Well, they had sex with me, too. Right, alien sexuals. Well, they said I was a new Jesus and would be king of Earth. Right, well, we're going to stop you there. Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Scott Bray and Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security Ronald Moultrie spoke May 17th of this year, 2022, during a House Intelligence Counterterrorism, Counterintelligence, and Counterproliferation subcommittee hearing. Jesus goddamn fucking <laughs> what the hell, you alphabet soup suit eating motherfuckers. Uh, on UAPs on Capitol Hill in Washington. I just imagine the C-SPAN cameramen trying to talk to each other. Oh, hey, dude, where are you shooting next? Oh, hey, I'm not really sure. Are you scheduled for the House Intelligence Counterterrorism Counterintelligence Counterproliferation Subcommittee hearing, or am I? I thought you were scheduled for the Airborne Object Identification and Management Executive Council Subcommittee hearing waste of money. Wait, so you're telling me I'm not scheduled for the House Intelligence Counterterrorism Counterintelligence Counterproliferation Subcommittee hearing today? I think Tony's scheduled for it. Tony! Yeah? Are you doing the camera for the House Intelligence Counterterrorism Counterintelligence Counterproliferation Proliferation Subcommittee hearing today. I think James is doing the House Intelligence Counterterrorism Counterintelligence Counterproliferation Subcommittee hearing today. Oh shit, James. A database of reports of UFOs now includes about 400 incidents, up from 143 assessed in a report released just a year ago. Wow. The military's 2021 report said no evidence of aliens has been found. Right. Scott W. Bray, the deputy director of Naval Intelligence, told lawmakers that they still haven't uncovered anything overtly non-terrestrial in origin, even though there are many incidents they can't explain. There's still a chance. None of the documented objects had attempted direct communication with U.S. aviators. Balls. And no attempt had been made to communicate with them, he said. Endless missiles count. As they all appeared to be unmanned. Mm -hmm. During the first congressional hearing on UFO sightings in more than 50 years, Pentagon officials told lawmakers there's not direct evidence that terrestrial life is the is the cause of what the government calls UAPs. It would be a lot cooler if it was. During the hearing, three unclassified videos of UAPs were shown to members of the House Intelligence Subcommittee on Counterterrorism and Counterintelligence. The geniuses of mm-hmm. America. Oh, wait. Scott Bray, Deputy Director of Neighbor Intelligence, uh, told lawmakers after a UFO sighting is reported, an investigation usually results in one of the following categorizations. One, butt stuff. Sorry. Airborne clutter. Space junk. Natural atmospheric phenomena. Nature shit. U.S. government or U.S. industry developmental programs. Mm-hmm. Secret cunts. Foreign adversary systems. Enemy cunts. Or Little green men. unexplained sightings that merit further investigation. Which is some kid in his garage that's like, I figured out how to do a <laughs> Mach 12 engine on a little fucking RC car and throw it in know. the air. I haven't. I, I really think think that our naval intelligence and those pilots and all of that stuff would know if it's a little RC well, drone. If it's going super fast, and if they took the time to put a racing stripe on it, I'm just saying. And, and, and again, defying it, the modified. laws of physics? Well, you know. Come on now. I did it. I just designed a super rocket. Oh, that's cute, dear. It runs off gerbil poop. Yes, dear. That'll cut down on the gerbil poop. I'm going to go fuck with the U.S. military. Okay, honey. Sounds good. I'm going to paint a racing stripe on it first, though. Yep, racing stripes are important. Pentagon officials say they conduct lengthy investigations on any report due to possible national security implications. And they promise to be super duper responsible with everything. So 1,500 pages of UFO-related research were just declassified as part of a Freedom of Information Act request. So that's where this this documentation packet is where I got this following information from. Okay. I had to dig a bit 
And uh, yeah, I did not, by any stretch of the imagination, read all of it. Right. I did not. <laughs> um, I picked and chose what I found interesting, and this is what I'm offering you. All right. So read the whole 1500 pages <laughs> if you'd like more. <laughs> yes. It's out there. You, it literally is. Um, encounters with UFOs have reportedly left Americans suffering from radiation burns, Gah. brain and nervous system damage, Yikes. and even unaccounted for pregnancy, according to a massive database of U.S. government reports recently made public through the Freedom of Information Act. Weird. That request. The database of documents includes more than 1,500 pages of UFO-related material from the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, AATIP, a covert U.S. Department of Defense program that ran from 2007 to 2012. Despite never being officially classified as secret or top secret, the AATIP only became known to the public in 2017 when former program director Louis Elizondo resigned from the Pentagon and released several now famous videos from an unidentified aircraft moving seemingly impossible ways to the media. As a parting gift for all your exemplary service with us, the president will allow you to expose one secret. Oh, can I tell people about aliens? No, but you can show them like UFOs. And I really want to do the aliens. Yeah, don't make me throw you in a gulag. Shortly after the AATIP's existence was revealed, a British media outlet filed a Freedom of Information Act request for any and all documents related to the program. Four years later, on April 5th, 2022, the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency honored that request by releasing more than 1,574 pages of material. And some of it has to do with leprechauns for some reason. The cache of documents includes reports on the biological effects of UFO sightings on humans, studies on advanced technologies such as invisibility cloaks, <laughs> and plans for deep space exploration and colonization. I can imagine the U.S. government fucking around with invisibility cloaks. Uh, yeah, sir, we lost Air Force One. What do you mean you lost him? Uh, I think the president pushed a button we told him not to push. We'll tell him to unpush it. Uh, he's currently busy sniffing people. Sorry. Some portions of the documents were withheld in part or redacted for privacy and confidentiality concerns. Mm. One standout document from the collection is a report titled Anomalous Acute and Subacute Field Effects on Human and Biological Tissues, dated March of 2010. Now, that's word salad. Yeah. But I read this report and it is fascinating. It, it is so fascinating because these individuals, we're going to go through it, but these individuals basically claimed these, um, you know, the biological effects, acute and subacute biological effects, everything from heart problems major organ failure, um, down to just like skin eruptions, you know, headaches, very strange things that were very common. They became commonplace after these experiences. So whether they're aliens or not, I don't know. Something is a com is causing common effects, physical effects on these individuals that have gone through these experiences, which yeah. fascinates me. Yeah. Um, and obviously it fascinates somebody because yeah. they have a whole field report on it. The report describes alleged injuries to human observers by anomalous advanced aerospace systems, some of which may be a threat to United States interests, according to the document. The report describes 42 cases of medical files and 300 unpublished click cases where humans sustained injuries after alleged encounters with anomalous vehicles, which include UFOs. In some cases, humans showed burn injuries or other conditions related to electromagnetic radiation, the report said. Some of them appearing to have been inflicted by energy-related propulsion systems. This is a good way to not be sued if you're the government. It's like, oh shit, we tested one of our drones <laughs> and we got to tell them it's aliens so that we don't get sued for a trillion dollars. Whoops. The report also noted cases of brain damage, nerve damage, heart palpitations, and headaches related to anomalous vehicle encounters. The report also included a list of alleged biological effects of UFO sightings on human observers between 1873 and 1994, compiled by the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. MUFON. A civilian, which is a civilian nonprofit group that studies reported UFO sightings, in case you didn't know. 
The reported effects of UFO encounters include Sore rectum This is a government document now Post-anal probe rashes Unaccounted for pregnancy Sexual assault by alien Apparent abduction Earthling napping Paralysis and experiences of perceived telepathy mm. Teleportation mm-hmm. And levitation Prolonged wackadoodlery These are people's claims And so there's enough of them where the government's like Well, fuck, let's make a category The reported effects of UFO encounters include these things Unaccounted for pregnancy That's crazy Oh boy The immaculate Immaculate conception, conception. Yeah oh, I swear, Cletus, it was immaculate conception I don't know about that It was an alien named Ezekiel You sure you aren't just fucking Zeke the truck driver? Nope, totally aliens It was aliens Fuck yeah <laughs> the report concludes that there is sufficient evidence to support a hypothesis. This is a direct quote that some advanced systems are already deployed and opaque okay. to full U.S. understandings. End quote. Now, the phenomena has stepped from the fringe into a serious national security concern discussed by lawmakers, defense officials, and even former presidents. One fascinating document included in an acquisition threat support report nice. sets out how to categorize anomalous behavior, quote unquote. How do we do science to this wackadoodlery? With encounters with Mothman, ghosts, Jersey devils, yetis, chupacabras, spirits, jabberwockies, elves, and other mythical and legendary entities that are new. It's a new classification. They're classified as AN3. Ash 9 Nud Nickery 3. Seeing a UFO with aliens on board would be a CE3. Poltergeist, crop circles, spontaneous human combustion, alien abductions, and other paranormal events are also categorized. Studies into advanced technologies such as invisibility cloaks and mind controlled robots <laughs> are also included in the document cache. Okay. Other documents obtained include studies into communicating with alien civilizations. Yeah, Earth governments would be great at that. And plans for deep space exploration and colonization. Brought to you by the makers of the DMV and government cheese. The slew of newly released documents contain letters from Senator Harry Reid, who asks for the project to be classed as top secret and documents about contractors. I think Harry Reid was all interested in uh, Skinwalker Ranch, too. Oh, okay. He was part of that suck. In one 2009 letter, Senator Reid describes how the program has already identified several highly sensitive, unconventional aerospace technologies which required extraordinary protection. Last year, the Pentagon released its long-awaited report into what it knows about a series of mysterious flying objects that have been observed in military airspace over the last two decades. The report, released on the website of the Office of the Director for National Intelligence, examined the 144 reports of encounters with what the government deemed UAPs. It comes as the Pentagon is opening a new office to investigate UFOs, their origins, and attempts to capture or exploit one of the mysterious craft after an amendment to a defense bill tabled in the U.S. Senate. The dedicated unit is called the Anomaly... Oh, here we go. (laughs) (laughs) So the dedicated unit is called the Anomaly Surveillance and Resolution Office, or... Arso. Okay, that's not so bad. Fucking Arsos. It will probe whether or not the strange craft have been reportedly buzzing the U.S. military, whether they're no unknown foreign technology or potentially something more alien. Okay, so now we're going to uh, delve into Louis or Louis Elizondo for uh, a little bit to kind of get a better understanding of him because he's kind of spearheaded a lot of this stuff. Okay. And he's the one that's done a lot of interviews. And a couple of episodes ago when we covered those UFO cases, he was the guy that was talking about the disclosure of that military airplane. Oh. Um, the two, remember? Uh-huh. So this uh, Louis Elizondo was the guy that was doing that interview right. that I pulled that information from. He's got his finger on the pulse of the yes, UFO shit. Yes, he does. Shit. So... Uh, Louis Elizondo is a former counterintelligence agent who from 2010 to 2017 ran the Pentagon secretive program or, you know, maybe it uh, wasn't top secret or anything. It just wasn't spoken about. Illuminati as fuck. Yeah. Investigating military reports on UFOs. So they focused on not 
civilian reports, but the, the reports of the military and what they had to say. The program was called Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or AATIP. We kind of touched on that at the beginning. There's a lot of alphabet soup. These days, the military don't call them UFOs because the term has become so stigmatized. Now they're using the term UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Give that a few years and it'll be done again. I know, I know. So Lou joined the Pentagon's uh, program, UAP program, as a skeptic. But during his time there, he became not only convinced that these things were real, but that they were interfering with military weapons platforms and operating in protected airspace with impunity. So he also became convinced that they did not belong to any earthly nation state. And that's the platform he moves forward on. Hmm. He retired from the Pentagon and then spoke to the New York Times, which revealed the existence of the Pentagon's UAP program on its front page. And you can see that December, um, the de- in December of 2017, alongside interviews with pilots who en- encountered these things. And since that 2017 New York Times expose, Lou has been briefing officials in Washington and working behind the scenes to compel the government to firmly establish a more transparent, thorough investigation into the phenomenon. And that's actually starting to happen. So that's kind of exciting. In my opinion, I think he was directed to go public. This is just my opinion. Don't. He's, it's just my opinion. He don't, was, he was don't come for me. Pro in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> don't come for me. We'll but in in my opinion, I think he was directed to go public upon the dissolution or recalibration of his department. Hmm. So, I think he's what they call like a soft discloser. Okay. Potentially. Um, a person that's put forward to softly disclose the facts in a way that people can accept and somewhat understand. Okay. He's getting close to tell us that Jesus was an alien and he actually existed 2,000 years ago. And yeah. Yeah, that he's pissed at us. But <laughs> I think most of us know, at least, okay, maybe, maybe we don't know, but most of us have a very strong feeling that we're not, what we've been told our whole lives here on this planet <laughs> is not exactly truth we definitely don't know what the fuck is going on right Right. and we've been led to believe that our government knows exactly what's going on and it's not not what we and 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 it's not what we think it is so the new national defense authorization act requires that the government sets up a permanent office to study these uaps on a defense department wide basis so and that was that whole (laughs) word salad thing that i covered (laughs) above so for things first rationally There are three options for what these aircraft are. Now, one, they're either a U.S. military black project. Mm -hmm. Expensive, killy things. They belong to a foreign government, like maybe China or Russia. Expensive, foreign, killy things. Or they are of non-human origins. Likely alien, killy things. It could be a kid playing with his toys, and he just went above and beyond. I don't know what kids you're hanging out with, but it seems to me a fucking child is not going to create something that boggles the mind of our Department of Defense. Well, there's other high-level engineers and scientists out there there's scientists that don't work for the government that are also very are they children some of them yes i just say that because it's always some whiz kid (laughs) that's like i invented this thing with nuclear power for my third grade science project and now i go to harvard (laughs) (laughs) welcome to propulsion with non-combustible engines here at mit wait how old are you i'm just mini i see so how do we even get to non-human origins as an explanation Mm -hmm. um this was actually one of the fundamental questions the advanced aerospace threat identification program we're trying to solve which of course has been authorized by the airborne object identification and management synchronization group which of course is brought to you by the airborne object identification and management executive council the first obvious question is obviously is this the illuminati and why are they such dicks to us is it one of us's secret technologies and the answer is quite succinctly no it is not so it probably is and how do we know that Well, because the government said so. Those type of programs don't typically test secret aircraft in and around areas where they're doing active maneuvers. Okay. So this is what I discovered in reading all of this. They send to test them at undisclosed test ranges, and they certainly don't endanger pilots' lives by testing this type of secret technology 
without coordinating that through joint staff. Okay. Unless in this case, they were like, let's test these pilots with this weird thing that we got and see what, ha- what, see what they do. Maybe, but they stand on the platform that they protect their people. They test LSD on like lobsters and shit um, for $3 million. All right, well, maybe Who they're knows? lying to us about that too. I mean, well, but, you know, it's the smart. newest lie. Okay. So the, U- the government agencies quickly realized that it wasn't U.S. technology. They found it in the Stargate. Sorry, I've been watching that show. The second option is foreign adversarial technology. Right. How do we know it's not that? Because when they said it, they meant it. And when they sent the letter, the envelope had a racing stripe. I don't know what that means either. Well, when you go through the historical documentation, the official documentation, one realizes very quickly that we've been seeing this technology for decades. And when you compare that to where we're at, let's say in like in the 40s and the 50s, we were just exploring and learning the secrets of the atom. We had just entered the jet age and we hadn't even been to space. And yet these technologies were outperforming anything and everything that we have today. Right. So that's something to think about yeah, there too. Insane maneuvers that no person could be involved in. Yeah. Right. So if this was some sort of foreign adversarial technology that's been around for 70 years, this would be considered probably the worst intelligence failure the U.S. has ever experienced. There's a high bar, but that's fair. The last fair. option is, well, if it's not our technology and it's not some sort of foreign adversarial technology, then whose or what is it? Little kid. Figured it out. He's going to get a job. It's a child. He's going to MIT right now. He builds fusion engines and rockets for fun. So this is where we're now in the conversation, certainly with our lawmakers and our legislative and executive branches. Okay. And that was shown in May of this year. Okay. So today, that's was precisely what they're trying to figure out. What exactly are these things if they're not ours? I think it's obvious they're angels. After looking into many civilian videos and official military released videos, it's got to be angels. I think the most persuasive documented UAP encounter is the famous case in 2004. Okay. Uh, it involved the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group. We covered this line by line as far as the video goes three or four episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to nutshell it here. This is a nuclear powered aircraft carrier along with a fleet of other nuclear powered vessels. And in some cases, submarines. They were doing what they call workups or they were practicing before going out on deployment. They were out in November of 2004 conducting operations off the coast of San Diego, California, and an escort ship with the latest Spy-1 radar capability began to pick up some weird sort of anomaly. In fact, not only was it the USS Princeton with a brand new, at that time, radar system, but there were also E-2 Hawkeye in the air providing airborne radar, and both were now basically looking at some sort of object. Their words coming in from 80,000 feet and within less than a second hovering 50 feet above the water. Yikes. It was a strange video to watch and quite mind-blowing, to say the least. These guys on the audio are quite obviously blown away and did not know what to think. Yeah, did you just see that? I am almost certain that was an angel. This is not going to be good for us. Roger that. Hey, cut the chatter. It was so perplexing, in fact, that they decided to launch two F-18 aircraft Super Hornets. Plus three X-Wings. So Commander Dave Farver and Commander Alex Dietrich, these were the two that were on this video. You can hear them talk. Not about angels. This is the commander, Dave Ferver, a Top Gun graduate and instructor. So they get directed to the area. And the first thing they notice is some water boiling, kind of like roiling and boiling on the surface of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So Dave decides he's going to go in and take a look at this boiling activity. So he conducts a very evasive maneuver to get down and get in close to what he describes as the danger zone. As this white looks like a gigantic tic tac, literally, like the breath mint. This is a tic tac. Yes, yeah, yeah. and it's determined to be about 40 feet long. There are no windows, no wings, or control surfaces, no obvious signs of propulsion, and yet this object is witnessed now by four separate individuals in two separate aircraft. Okay, we're all seeing this, right? Yeah, is that an angel? I don't think that's an angel. It kind of looks like an angel to me. I'd say more of a tic-tac. I'll tic-tac your face, Lieutenant. They witnessed it bouncing back and forth, almost like a ping-pong ball, right over the surface of the water. Tight. So as he goes down to take a closer look at this object, all of a sudden, this thing begins to react to the Commander Farver's maneuvers. 
Farvers. Like a dick. Sorry. As Commander Farvers comes in for a better look, this thing begins to maintain its distance from his aircraft, moving with the aircraft almost intuitively. So that shows, first of all, it's quite likely intelligently controlled. Probably by Satan. And so as he decides, okay, I'm not getting anywhere here, he went aggressively in for this thing full throttle, and all of a sudden, within less than a second, it's gone. Dude. It absolutely disappears over the horizon. Now, what's even more crazy, and this is the thing that I was sharing with you in that episode, mm -hmm. is that about five seconds later, just shy of five seconds, this object is then picked up once again on radar 60 miles away. And in fact, it is now at the rendezvous point waiting for them. Yikes. Yeah, so that rendezvous point is a point that nobody knows. They don't know about the pilot's rendezvous point, but somehow this thing anticipated their next move Shit. and was able to get literally 60 miles in five seconds. And it's something certainly well beyond U.S. military capabilities. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty. But do you think that five-year-old that goes to Harvard may have done something to boggle their mind? Probably. Do you think? Okay. I, I mean, it's confirmed at this point, just right there. <laughs> There was another group of videos of two UAP encounters from 2015. Now, these are the videos that the Pentagon authenticated as being real in 2020. And what I learned from listening to interviews and reading documents released by the Department of Defense is... Birds aren't real. There are five observables that they associate when they look at something considered a UAP phenomenon as being truly unique. So here they are. Instantaneous acceleration. Super fast shit. Hypersonic velocity. More fast shit. Low observability. Stealth shit. Transmedium travel. Transformer shit. Or the ability to operate in multiple environments or domains. Flying submarine shit. And what would basically be referred to as anti-gravity or the ability to fly with no wings. Magic shit. No surface controls. Magic shit. Um, no sur control surfaces and no obvious signs of propulsion and quite frankly not even a cockpit. It's a fucking tic-tac. I can fly my UAP with no handlebars. <laughs> no handlebars. <laughs> Everybody's saying. <laughs> so I began to question the authenticity of this disclosure and these whistleblowers. And what I settled on, at least, what satisfied most of my unease was this. And this was a mis mismatch of concepts provided by many individuals answering this question. It seems there is a strong undercurrent in our country of individuals, in our government particularly, that are taking this topic seriously. This is not a topic that is similar to let's get a good bourbon where the longer you keep it on the shelf, the better it gets. It seems that our officials are finally seeing this as a conversation rather more like spoiled veggies in the fridge. Okay. The longer you leave it there unaddressed, the more it's going to smell. So it seems they're seeing this as an issue better addressed sooner than later. Nice. Now, the question is no longer are these real? The angels have been confirmed. It's no longer for up to up for debate at this point. I mean, we're here. The question the officials are looking into and what they are publicly sharing is with us is this. What is it? Where is it from? What is its intent? And what can or should they be doing about it? And how do we get our hands on these children so those we can get them to Harvard and get them into the military industrial complex immediately? Those are the new questions. There have been some pretty extraordinary statements issued by the powerful government people over the past few years. Namely, the serving administrator for NASA, former directors of the Central Intelligence Agency, former directors of national intelligence, former presidents of the United States, former and current members of Congress, both Senate and the House of Representatives, and now the current administrator for NASA, all acknowledging the reality that this is real. So, I think once they took away the tinfoil hat notion and stigma of UFOs and began openly disclosing data that they've been collecting and began to openly look at this from a national security perspective, they started having a fair and rational conversation without the associated stigma. And I think this is great. Now, Luis Elizondo brought up a very valid point in one of his interviews. Don't trust the government. <laughs> That's good advice, Luis. And I love this point. So this is, um, it's not a direct quote from him, but it is a, it's a most, most of the quote itself. So there have been moments in our species, paradigm shifts as a species, and it happens to push the evolution of mankind. 
The first one, perhaps, is when we came out of the cave and we looked at the stars and we realized our universe. Hey, Donk, what that shit in sky? What the fuck is sky? The blanket. Oh, it probably billions of fiery nuclear explosion. Hmm, I go jerk off now. Me too. Our world just got a lot bigger. Right. The second time, perhaps, was when two stones were struck together created a spark, and all of a sudden we began to illuminate the darkness around us. Well, I think we just invent fire. Me God now. You know God, me God. Me want war now. Yeah, let's fucking kill each other. The third time was probably when a couple of folks were standing on a beach and someone said, you know, what I'm going to sail, I'm going to sail over the horizon, and of course people said, no, no, you don't want to do that. The earth is flat. It's much more of a realm, you know, like a realm. Yeah. And there's sea monsters out there. And of course, now we know, and we kind of laugh at these ideas, because they were right about the same we, monsters. Jesus, fuck. We look back and we laugh, but in reality, you know what? There really are sea monsters. All the things in the ocean are monsters. They're just called great white sharks. Nope. And blue whales. Nope. And the gray squid of the Pacific. Nope. And we realize... Reality is terrifying. They're not really sea monsters. They're just part of nature. Right. They're part of our reality now. Which is horrifying. So... Don't ever go in the ocean. Perhaps with this topic, maybe we're just standing at the precipice of yet another paradigm moment for our species. Maybe this this is just another beach, and we're looking over yet another horizon. Well, the realm hollow earth, it's kind of like less of a horizon. Okay, so I'm going to be covering two official documents here from this, this disclosure package, and they're the appendices to this 1,574-page packet. Now, the first one is Appendix A. It's called Schusler Catalog for UFO-Related Human Physiological mm, Effects. That's good soup. And it's a list. So we've got um, apparent abductions. Naughty aliens. Electromagnetic effects on vehicles. Dickhead aliens. Paralysis. Total prick aliens. Perceived time loss. Hippie aliens. Light beam effects. Full-on barter fair hippie aliens. Eye injuries like temporary blindness and conjunctivitis. Cunty aliens. Heat. Hot aliens. Um, medical exams. Okay, sinister aliens. Burns. Witty aliens. Unconsciousness. That's fine. Marks left on the body. That's not fine. Significant sound effects like humming or drumming. Most aliens are hippies. Electrical shock. Bellatrix, yes. let's see what happens when we electrocute the half-shaved earth ape. I bet it shits itself. Blarp, ha, blarp, ha, blarp, ha. Blarp. Physiological, emotional shock or intense fear. Dicks. Prickling, tingling sensations. Lesser dicks. Pain. Dicks again. Skin sores mm. and a rash. Come on, man. Induced headaches. Dicks. Migraines. That's nice of them. Force field impact. Mm -hmm. Nausea and vomiting. All the bad things. Sensation of cold. You're frosty alien. Disorientation and confusion. Have I been abducted? Ground traces. No. Weakness and fatigue. Mm? Amnesia. No. Apparent experience of telepathy. Mm, no. Numbness. No. Significant odors. Vo Got it. Voice loss. No. Appetite loss. Uh -oh. Insomnia. Mm? Perceived time suspension. Hippies. Dehydration. Ooh. Swelling of tissues. Shit. Dizziness. Fuck. Weightlessness. Damn. Levitation. Balls ass. Healing. Shit dog. Sexual encounters. Fuck yeah. Deaths. Got it. Diarrhea. Sometimes. Hair loss. Got it. Nightmares. Just my bank account. Nosebleeds. No. Ringing in the ears. That's just Nickelback. Breathing problems. Urination problems. Gynecological problems. Friendly aliens. Acclaimed implant. Perceived teleportation. I do that. Itching. Loss of taste. Loss of hearing. An induced feeling of calm or serenity. So everything's okay. stupid. All the bad things. This is the, evidently the exhaustive list of experiences people have had. So much so, they've found these so common that they've put these in a list now. It's kind of like a checklist that they're able to go through with people who've had these experiences. Released by the Department of Ten Defense, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, we're all wackadoodles. It just seems like, it's like, well, they've all said these things and hundreds mm -hmm. of them said this one. Yeah, it's very cur curious. So, a There's some kind of science being done here. Wackadoodleology. <laughs> so the next one is Appendix C, and it's uh, the classification of anomalous behavior. These are the A's, so the AN rating, anomalies. Anomaly 1, they have no lasting physical effects, like lights and unexplained explosions. Okay. AN 2, anomalies which do have lasting physical effects poltergeists mm. materialized objects areas of flattened grass and corn circles what? or crop circles okay an3 
anomalies associated with entities, mm. i.e. ghosts, yetis, <laughs> spirits, elves, and other mythical legendary Fictional things. creatures. Okay. AN4, witness interaction with the AN3 entities, i.e. near-death experiences, religious miracles and visions, out-of-body experiences, and AN5, anomalous reports of injuries and deaths, i.e., Spontaneous human combustion. Did our Un- government just go stranger? I know, or? isn't this weird? <laughs> Spontaneous human combustion, unexplained wounds, as well as permanent healing that results from a paranormal experience. Fish. Right? Fish. Now, the next one. These are the rest of the ratings. We have the MA rating. Which means I could be alien boobies. Now, this describes behavior of a UFO. Does your UFO have behavioral problems? Um, a U- MA1, a UFO has been observed, which travels in a discontinuous tra- trajectory, like vertical drops, maneuvers, or loops. MA2, it's MA1, plus any physical effects caused by the UFO, which we just covered in that giant list. Right. MA3. It's MA-1 plus any entities observed on board, like an airship, uh, cases of the late 19th century. MA-4, maneuvers accompanied by a sense of reality transformation for the observer. And MA-5, a maneuver that results in a permanent injury or death of the witness. Yikes. Now, these are the the next one, flyby ratings or the FB ratings. FB1, a simple sighting of a UFO traveling in a straight line across the sky. I may have seen one of those. FB2, is FB1 accompanied by physical evidence? None of that. Means. That list again. Mm-hmm. FB3, a flyby where entities are observed on board, which apparently is very rare. Yeah, the aliens don't ride with the top down all the time. FB4, a flyby where the witness experienced a transformation of reality into the object or its occupants. Fuck whatever that means. I don't know Tripping what that balls, means. Must, must be. And then FB5, a flyby which the witness could suffer permanent injuries or even death. Now, the case they've got is the Cash Landrum case here, which is what that appear, uh, is attributed to. Hmm. Now, next is the CE rating or the Close Encounters rating. We're very familiar with this because of movies. Yeah. So CE1, UFO comes within 500 feet of the witness, but no after effects are suffered by the witness or the surrounding area. Okay. CE2 is a CE1 that leaves landing traces or injuries to the witness. Evidence. A CE3, entities have been observed on the UFO. Gotta go. A CE4, the witness has been abducted. And is on the UFO. And a CE5 is a CE4, which results in permanent physiological injuries or death. I want to see the stats on these, like how many they think right. of those there are, of each one. Now, those are the brand new classifications. Some have remained the same. Some have been slightly changed. And some have new things added uh, as of, well, essentially it was added on sometime in in the past, but they were brought to our attention and released in December of 2021. So those are the new things that they're following. Interesting. That's it. All right. Well, let's talk about what we learned. What do our dipshits think about all this? Yeah. Okay, well, that's the disclosure episode of the Dipshit Files. Fucking fascinating. I don't know if I bored you or listeners, but I was so... I love it. ...fascinated by this. Yeah. Um, Mainly because of the historical move, literally massive historical move of our our government going, just kidding. Yeah, Yeah, we know. Well, it's different people, so... Right, right. It'd be funny if some of the people that were like, fuck you, were like, okay, I'm sorry. It'd be better that way. Right. Well, like it's been going on for so long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's still no evidence of aliens whatsoever. They have never said... Well, see, the thing that I found fascinating was they've never said that they found irrefutable evidence that aliens exist. Um, but what they have stated, and I think it's great that they're actually digging into things that they don't know, they don't know where they've come from, and they don't understand from a matter of national security. Yeah. So 
if that's what it takes, that's great. But what that's do it, what that's doing is just playing into these movie, mm-hmm. these movie things where it's like, yeah, well, the government's going to shoot them down and cause a galactic war. Right. You know what I mean? That's, that sounds like something our I know. <laughs> our wisest and best. I know. Well, they're like, well, here we are. You know, you're a threat to national security because we don't understand you or how you work. So we're just going to kill shoot you. Shoot missiles at we're you. We're going to kill you dead. Yeah. But evidently, that is potentially happened in 1943 what was it um the the episode over um catalina island remember that in the in world war ii where they were filing firing missiles and shit in the sky at a thing oh, wow. in california you know exactly oh, about it because you told me about the it the battle of los angeles yes yeah. thank you yeah, yeah. thank you so I mean, we've done that before. Yeah, if, but they were probably just shooting at random shit. Okay, well, or a tic tac. A tic tac. You know, who knows? I right. Mean, yeah, it could have very well easily been one of these things, perhaps. When you dig through this documentation, and I, like I've said, I didn't read it all. I really, I, I didn't. I look for specific sure. things. There's so much information and so much word salad in there. It's really hard to get through it. But in there. There is uh, reports from like the 60s that has these, the reports stating that there were flying objects that are similar to the flying objects we're seeing today, Um, but they were completely discredited. You know, we had saucers, but there were uh, rods, Mm -hmm. like long rod objects Mm -hmm. uh, in the sky. And I think I even remember seeing I could be wrong, but I think I remember seeing a report in there where they talked about an ovoid object, hmm. which could be an egg or a fucking Tic Tac. It's a fucking egg, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this stuff has been going on a long time. Yeah. It's been documented uh, documented a long time. Well, Mr. Tom DeLong, mm-hmm. formerly of Blink-182, mm-hmm. the expert in science, oh, that's all science. Right, yeah, yeah. No, I watched an interview with him recently, and, mm-hmm. and he's a guy that's dug into this as much as possible. I don't know right. what he knows and right. all that stuff. But he was mentioning, it's like, well, they don't think that they come from other planets, because that's too hard. They right. think they come from multiple dimensions. They're just on mm-hmm. a different frequency. And well, like, and I think that's why they're bringing is this in Black Mirror. Is that what's happening? <laughs> I mean, the whole I've world feels like I've never watched that. I've never watched that. It's just bizarre. It's Twilight Zone. Okay. That's what's oh, going on. Oh, cool. It's very Twilight Zoney. Well, you know, I, but sci-fi. I'm kind of on the fence here. I wouldn't be surprised if there's other life out there. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Right. Um, but maybe it's us from the future. Because what he's saying is time uh, right. isn't linear. It's exactly. it's all on top of each other. Oh, so this could be us from the future. Could be. Run around being like, I got to go fix that thing real quick. Could you imagine today jumping in a time machine of some kind with all of our technology looking and being the way we are? Oh, man. And going back to like. Go back and be a caveman. Pale assisting. I'd, I I'd play like Metallica in their face. <laughs> like, oh. But I mean, could you imagine going back to the times of very, very primitive humans mm-hmm. and what those primitive humans would think mm. of us right we are not covered with hair we're not as big and built as they are our hands and feet are smaller oh, our man, skin is fun lighter of us so much right i mean it's not beyond the scope of the imagination that these grays and whatever are us from the future sure you know it's that's a hypothesis that it's, exists it's an idea right and who knows we don't know we don't what know. the hell's going we don't on know. at all and i'm just i think it's a breath of fresh air that the government has finally said we don't know. And Stranger Things is real. <laughs> well, this has been the Dipshit Files yes, number 18. And yes. our expedition, our exposition, <laughs> our expediting of some sort of thing about uh, disclosure. The FIOFA. The FIOFA. Freedom of Information Act. We got some of that shit. Yes, we did. So I hope you guys learned some stuff. I know I did. Yeah. I, I still think the government or the dipshits He thinks it's a five-year-old that's at Harvard. Maybe like 12, 13. You know, you know, flying it, paper airplanes. It could be a 55-year-old weirdo and his friends. <laughs> you know, that's how this shit works. I'm not shaming you for your ideas. I'm just laughing at them. I, I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying it's a guy that's gone further with technology in his basement or in his garage. And then, you're telling me that the Sasquatch... Entire, and then the entire globe, the entire history of mankind, this one person... Huh? 
you know. Well, I mean, Nikola Tesla it, did it be, exist at one time, so yeah, maybe we have a new Tesla. There's always a bunch of Teslas maybe, out there. There's maybe. a bunch of mm-hmm. kids that aren't working for the government. And the guy has been living for you know 110 years, and he's been doing this consistently. Well, what I'm thinking of, think about it like this. I don't remember his name, <laughs> and it was kind of a conspiratorial thing. But that Myers guy that made the water-powered car, yeah, and yeah he disappeared, yeah. and right. in his last words, where they poisoned me. Right. Anyway, that guy uh, was doing shit in his own lab. Mm-hmm. That was all on his own. Oh. Nobody was fu- was funding that, just himself. Mm-hmm. And he did something that the government was like, that's not possible. And it probably isn't. It's probably a bunch of bullshit. So they made his existence impossible. Perhaps. <laughs> I mean, that's that cloak and dagger conspiracy <laughs> shit, for sure. But what I think is like, there are people out These there. These are that not are... the droids you're looking for. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> right. But there are great scientists out there that mm-hmm. don't play baseball with mm-hmm. MIT and they don't want to go mess around with the government and blah, blah, blah. And they're I, in their backyards and they're in their garages playing with their kids. And they're and just trolling the world. Maybe. And they have been for seven How's years. How's that trolling? They're just like taking their little their little UAV out for a ride. UAP. Just out for a little thing. It's like, wow, that goes Mach 12. Yeah, because they're fucking with the military. That's trolling. Well, good for them. On if purpose. They, if, if they admitted like, yeah, we had this thing and we were just doing it, a science project. They'd be like, okay, well, now we're going to take your kid. We're going to put him in an underground, deep <laughs> underground military base. A dumb. Why would they keep doing it then? If they are the threat of their children being taken away or threat but, of their life, why would out. they keep doing it? It's a secret society of little kids that have great technological <laughs> skills and have built a bunch of radio controlled <laughs> shit. And they've been doing it for hundreds of years. Uh, basically, it's the plot line for Assassin's Creed. Uh, uh, so anyway. they're ant people. Sure. <laughs> that sounds fair. And they're... They're in Hollow Earth. It was aliens. <laughs> it was aliens. <laughs> All right. I think, I think we're going deep into a weird place now. So this has been the Dipshit Falls number 18. Yes, it has. The United States government and all the governments are the dipshits, dipshits. once again in this one. Mm-hmm. And probably the media and probably ourselves. Yeah, but I'm probably Human- a dipshit humanity. too for laughing at you. Yeah. I, I kind of think friend. your five-year-old it's Harvard a, student is a fucking dipshit idea. Uh, but you know. But aliens from a thousand fucking... Okay, Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. You guys know all the things. Scatcast.com. Yes. Info at scatcast.com if you'd mm-hmm. like to tell us about some disclosure that you'd like to disclose. Right. And, of course, you can get us at patreon.com mm-hmm. forward slash scatcast to become part of our inside world. Yes. And we've got some dipshit files, extra stuff going in there soon. Mm-hmm. We're just two people, though. There's only two of us at we're, this company. We're trying. We're trying. There's not enough time in the day. We're working so hard to get your shit out there. Yeah. You know, some, thanks for being patient yeah, and for loving us anyways. Sometimes I want to just sit down and just have a sandwich and fuck a pet of chicken <laughs> or a dog or something, you know? He just wants to watch SG-1. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a Stargate week. That's, that's why this has been perfect. Yeah. Uh, then, by the way, Revisiting that first season of that show, wow, mm-hmm. that was some good uh-huh. writing in that show. I, yeah, it made, brought me to tears a couple times. Almost every episode, I was just like, that's good writing. Well, I'm going to have to check it out. I've never seen it. It's so. a bunch of crazy shit, just like what we discussed today. Awesome. So, all right. Well, we'll talk at you in the future. And it'll seem like the present. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Shit files. Bing. Beep boop. Oh, fucking. <laughs> that's not the noise. Be- Bing bong. Beep boop.